think is so interesting about the hall is that by all reports, when it first opened in the 1870s, uh, it didn't have the amazing overhang because uh, the organ wasn't yet installed and that didn't happen until 1890. And, and actually the reviews of the opening concert were, were rather mixed that it wasn't such a great acoustic. But once they put in the organ, uh, they, they created this chamber here that acts as sort of a megaphone that sends the music out into the hall. And I really think that that's a huge part of the magic of this venue. And I know when I'm standing on the, on the podium, it's as if I can feel the wind in my hair as the music comes at me and comes at the audience. And I think that's part of this incredibly visceral experience of being in the hall and of hearing music and experiencing music in the hall. The music hall was a gift to the people by the original Troy Savings Bank. They had built the bank and then they decided to do something special for the city of Troy because they felt the city of Troy was doing good things for them. And that's where the music hall came from. And I know an awful lot of people who played here and people who did, um, who came here to do lectures, because that was a big thing in the 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s. It's just been a place that's uh, steeped in history, but it's also um, a place that keeps up with the times as well, I think anyway. I think it's one of the greatest hidden gems of certainly our region, but perhaps nationally as well. I think uh, it even has a, a stronger reputation maybe in Europe than it does here because uh, it's been such a renowned uh, location for concerts and recordings for many, many years. And because it is situated above street level, um, it doesn't have the visual impression that there's a, there's a world-class concert hall as you're walking by. So that's kind of one of the unique factors of, of life here. But um, it is a true treasure and, you know, when musicians come to play here, uh, you can see it in their faces and, and watch them really start to appreciate how unique this, this venue is. I was born and grew up in Troy, but not surprisingly, my earliest memory wasn't until my 20s. My first memory was when a group of people started putting together the Music Hall Association and wanting to reopen the Music Hall. I had heard of the hall, but I had never seen it. I had no idea of its, uh, of, of its grandeur. In the 50s and 60s, the mentality was tear down and rebuild modern. Uh, and it wasn't really until the 70s that historic preservation started taking hold. Such an extraordinary place. Uh, there's a lot of different words I probably could use, but the one that has been coming back to me is sanctuary. Just to think that there's a place that you can be where like none of the outside world can creep in or adversely or negatively impact you. And all you have to do here is either take the music in from the audience or just lose yourself in the music if you're here on the stage. I think that the uh, future of Troy and the Music Hall are intricately related and I also think that the future for small, walkable, livable, community-based cities is bright, and I think Troy's in the forefront of that. So I have, you know, bright hopes for the, for the city and, and for the music hall. Nothing but bright hopes. I'm amazed when people come here from Europe or from Asia, and they've heard of the place, and they're looking forward to playing here, because, they, you know, they just heard of the acoustic qualities of the building, and. And they, you know, and then obviously once they hear themselves here, they are, you know, it's exactly what they expected. You know, they really fall in love with the place too. And it's that kind of f feel that anyone has that comes here that just rubs off on me. You know, it's just I enjoy being in the building knowing especially that what joy it brings to so many people. I've been on the board now for a couple of years and when I first joined, I was telling my sister about it. My sister is a professional viola player. She teaches strings, she plays in a couple of quartets and other um, orchestras in Queens and Brooklyn and Manhattan. And I was explaining the hall to her and, and I started in on this like, I was, I was going to tell her about this great space and my sister said, Kelly, stop. I of course know about the music hall. <laughs> and so, and, and I, I find that to be more true actually than, than me needing to explain the hall to people. It's, it's people stopping me and saying, no, of course I know about that place. It's always listed in one of the best acoustics, all those lists and everything like that. So I'm surprised um, not being a musician myself 
hearing how so many people outside of Troy already know what it is and they're excited to talk to me about it and tell me what their thoughts are on it and how they've heard about it. Everybody knows that all the great figures of the hall through the last 140 almost years uh, have wanted to play and experience the space and maybe the most incredible example of that is the great Cleveland Orchestra, which as, as you know is one of our, our greatest American orchestras, maybe the greatest, the most elegant ensemble of any orchestra. And when George Zell, a uh, great German conductor, was for many decades the conductor of the Cleveland Orchestra, uh, he, he, made, he insisted every time the orchestra played an East Coast tour that they book a date in the hall just because he wanted his musicians to have the privilege of playing in this great acoustic. It's a big cultural anchor, I find, too, which is interesting. So when the National Symphony Orchestra of Ukraine plays here, so many people mm -hmm. come from Water of Lead and, and, and elsewhere, and you almost don't hear any English spoken in the audience, and, and you know everybody breaks spontaneously into a national anthem. And, um, and, it, and you know, as, as ushers, you know, we might wait here an extra 45 minutes or an hour because people are socializing in, in that way. Or when Yundi Li had a, a, a piano recital here, and he's a fabulous uh, Chinese classical pianist, and and so many people from Asian backgrounds were here and, and really enjoying that. We saw the Indigo Girls. It was an amazing show. I had never seen them live before. As a lesbian couple, to be able to come to a space like this, such a world-renowned space, and feel uh, part of a real community um, was really cool and of course they were amazing. Mm -hmm. Smaller shows in some ways like uh, Milk Carton Kids, The Weepies, those were terrific shows and then you know getting Elvis Costello here was was a huge treat and of course Wynton Marsalis has played here many many times probably he's appeared here more than any other single musician and, and he always puts on a, a wonderful show. We're very much known for jazz and classical music, world music and folk music those are not as in the top of mind for, for younger audiences. And so it's been, to reach those younger audiences, again, we have to figure out which artists are, are really both fit the, what we have to present in and also are appealing to, to those younger demographics. The shows that you see here, no matter who's playing, are different from the same artist in another venue because of the acoustics and because of the just the intimacy of the, of the theater. So it's it's a really special opportunity to experience whatever artist that you're that you're uh, seeing. We had a group here a couple of years ago, Lake Street Dive, and they were as contemporary as you can possibly get. Um, and their stage set was modern and there were lights blaring everywhere. It was so totally an antithesis of what you would normally think about, about this great old hall. But they fit in perfectly and they put on a terrific show. So it's kind of like you can do lots of different things. It was, it was an incredible moment. It was, it was right after Katrina and, uh, you know, everybody had been watching CNN and, you know, what was going on down there. It was a tragedy. And um, shortly after, I don't know if it was a week or two weeks or a few weeks after, uh, Randy Newman was booked here. And uh, I think I sat right there. And he was right here. And, uh, you know, Randy Newman, for people who don't know, I mean, a lot of people think of his pop music, but he's a real a blues guy, you know? With a lot of funk and New Orleans style. And New Orleans is in his heart, and he did a song called Louisiana 1927. It was about the flood of 1927. And uh, one of the lines in the song was, you know, they're, they're trying to wash us away. And he kept singing it. <clears throat> over and over. And there wasn't a dry eye in the place. I mean, right now. <laughs> It's pretty tough to deal with. Um, <clears throat> I mean, he kept the soul, the gravel in his voice, you know, the true emotion that he brought to it. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen a performance like that. And uh, he meant it. And we felt it. If you look at the stats, we're an area of creatives. Mm -hmm. We're an area of creatives and we need space to show off that creativity. So the music hall being here is just such a critical part of that, right? Because 
that's what makes the region interesting. We can have all of the chips, we can have all of the wind technology, we can have all of that, but what makes people excited to be here and what makes this region interesting and gives it that texture is the arts and the music hall plays a huge role in that. We're the largest cultural institution in downtown Troy, actually in Troy, I believe, and uh, we bring over 45,000 uh, people into the downtown core each year who spend time downtown, spend money at restaurants, and help revitalize this, this great community. It's, uh, it's an economic driver, um, and I think it helps enhance Troy's reputation as sort of a, a creative and cultural hub in the, in the region. I think that's really been growing lately. The music hall, to me, means opportunity. Um, to be able to express myself and provide a platform, you know, for other artists. Like during the summer, I ask other artists to come and play with me, you know. So to be able to have them come and have friends come and, you know, bring a micro community of folks that may not come to Troy, you know, here and see what's going on. Well, it's always fun to win a Grammy. It's much more fun than not winning a Grammy, <laughs> which I've also done. We've been nominated, I think, six times, and we've won twice, which is quite fabulous. Uh, and uh, this last one uh, was, as was the first one. The first one, I think, was in 2014. Uh, <clears throat> both of those were, were recordings we made here on the Troy Simmons Bank Music Hall stage. And I must say that while obviously the greatness of our orchestra and hopefully the interpretation, our soloists uh, had a great deal to do with those wins, but at the same time, the fact that we were recorded in this magnificent acoustic just made us sound as good as we possibly could sound. And I'm sure that that also had something to do with the fact that we won. And, and this year I was particularly proud um, because we were competing against uh, a couple of little orchestras called the Boston Symphony and the Philadelphia Orchestra and four of the greatest soloists in the world. And so to actually prevail in that company, um, I think had something to do with the hall as well. I think it offers an access to the cultural arts through music that maybe people might not otherwise have. I mean, especially the outdoor summer stage. Um, I just remember how incredible it was for to see the street blocked off. You know, it's like a little block party. And people just strolling and enjoying walking their pet or uh, spending time with their partner. Across the street, there were people who were sitting out dining. And um, especially during this time of COVID, it's, you know, it's crucial to have some kind of an outlet that, that feeds your soul, you know, beyond just being <laughs> caught up inside and stressing out and, you know, freaking out about, oh my gosh, what's, what's gonna happen next? You know, to just let all of that go and just have um, the opportunity to just kind of mm, bathe in some music and, and an experience that can, you know, help pull you through some of the anxieties that living in this time can bring. I think artists are some of the most genuine storytellers in, in society, the great ones. They don't have a an ulterior motive. They're just speaking from their heart and from their mind and to document what their experiences are, which is internal and external, um, is, it's important because it, it's therapeutic and it helps people be able to come together and have those conversations or moments where it's like, I see you, you know, we might live two totally different worlds, but right now we're here together and we're creating this space of flow and of love. And you know, that's essentially what art and music and dance and culture is supposed to be for. It's supposed to, to, to free people. The main projects that we collaborated with the Music Hall have been the Lift series. And then most recently this ongoing Uplift uh, commissioning series, which is kind of 
I guess a reimagining of the Lyft series. I mean, it's not. It's like a spinoff. They're not shows. They're just you know a collection of of individual songs. But it's coming out of the spirit of the Lyft series, which is engaging the local music community and and bringing artists into this space that might not have been able to perform in this space otherwise. You know, it's a difficult thing because this is a huge, huge hall. You know, and. Um, there are a lot of considerations that have to go into who you can book and and for any number of reasons that you know we all can figure out um, so finding ways of of making this space accessible to everyone that's around here regionally I mean there's such an incredible music community and I think the hall and John and and us are are very interested in finding those ways of, of bringing more and more people in um, and so that was really the idea behind the Lift series and then continuing with the Uplift series, um, engaging that same community, but, but now commissioning new work, so giving support to write new music. You know, you think about places in your life where, like, where do I matter? Where do I have value? You can always matter to yourself, but you know, when you get beyond <laughs> your own sphere, there are not a lot of places that you can feel like you're valued or feel like you matter. So I feel that here and I'm grateful. I think I could listen to any style of music if it was live. And uh, this hall is a great place to experience live music. Uh, again, it's not just the sound, but the, the scale of the hall creates uh, an intimacy. And, and the acoustics create not just great sound, but great intimacy as well. So it's a great place to come and listen to music that you might not tune into uh, however you receive your music. Uh, but seeing it live gives you a new appreciation for that style of music, watching the performers. Uh, it, it's almost as if they're playing for you in your living room. Uh, it's that special. So for me, it's an opportunity to, to come and hear music that I might not otherwise um, listen to or partake of. And, and see it, seeing it performed live gives you a different appreciation for it. Well, I'm hoping it just keeps going and does what it does best, which is to be here and to be a venue for a, a place where people can come and perform and show what they do best. Um, you know, everybody who comes here, uh, that's one of the first things they say when they get on stage. Uh, what a great place to perform. Uh, the sound is great. We feel good about, you know, being here. It just sort of draws people. You know, we've had uh, several people come back three or four times because they just love performing here. I'm hoping that they just we keep on doing stuff like that because that's, that's really, a, it's a fun place to come for that kind of show. And it's a varied place. I mean, you never know what you're gonna see. Well, I think we're in a, going in a, a really incredible direction. And if we continue in, the, in that direction, I think things are gonna be wonderful here. Teaching and, and you know, more uh, classwork with the local students and getting them more involved in the arts using the, the abundant space below the hall in the building for workshops and recording spaces, rehearsal spaces, and make it more of a, not just a theater, but a community home for the artistic people of, of the Capital District. I'm incredibly proud to work here. I am proud to tell people I work here. I think this is a jewel in the Northeast of this country. The future of the Music Hall and really for all of us who are in the performing arts uh, is changing. Uh, we've had the opportunity to experience more virtual um, appreciation of, of music and, and culture over the last uh, year or so. We're going to continue that, that journey in terms of how to, how to expose uh, the community to the great things that, that we can bring uh, into their lives.